Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about our ServiceNow offering from Ahead. As you all are aware, the ServiceNow platform is quite robust and has multiple applications across the board. Anywhere from what most clients use in ITSM management to some of their new cutting edge items such as customer service management and HR. Today we're going to focus on the security operations item. Specifically, we're going to look at security incident response, vulnerability response, and threat intelligence. I want to perform a demo of how this application could work and we're going to show how it can be integrated with various items. In the demo we're going to provide today, you'll see that the Splunk integration will be leveraged as part of this demonstration. So I'm going to start this demonstration by logging into my Splunk instance and being able to show how we can look at information coming into our sim. While Splunk is the item I'm using here is for demonstration purposes and AHEAD provides items related to the Splunk services themselves, other items such as Logarithm or Rapid7 or QRadar can be used as your SIM integration function. Starting off, I'm just going to do a search. So I loaded some demo data into my environment to kind of show and match demo data that's in my ServiceNow environment to kind of give you a, a way of how this information can be correlated and used. I started searching for malicious code. Let me just start malicious and there we go. Now, I just loaded some data in within the last 24 hours. And looking at this, I can see how this is actually going to impact me. So I have various items that are being loaded in. Looking at the different components here, I see there's malicious code coming in. I have one for an SAP environment. I have another one for a WePOS environment. I'm going to take a look at my SAP environment item. So I'm going to open that up, and I can see that there's several items out there. Now I've done some mapping in the background to say exactly what content I want to be, have sent over to my ServiceNow instance. So I'm going to go ahead and create an event. Now, from this particular in integration, you can create a security event or a security incident. And depending on how you've licensed the module, you may have security event management already enabled, or you may have to uh, acquire that as part of an additional licensing purchase. I'm going to go ahead and create an event. It'll pop that up and show, hey, we're going to send this information over. And what I want to do is I want to show you now on my system that I've actually sent this over. So let me go over to my security events, and you'll see I have an item that's going to come across. So let me just do a reload. Okay, and there's my information. So I'm going to do, what I want to show here is I'm going to go back to my Splunk instance for a moment, and I'm just going to hit the enter key a couple of times. And what that's doing is it's actually sending multiple events over to ServiceNow. Now, why would I do that? I'm trying to simulate how this actual SIM is going to send data. Because even though the SIM may be handling multiple thousands of events per minute or second, ServiceNow can't do that. So what we're showing though is that even though the SIM is going to take that number of items, it's still going to send noise. And ServiceNow is going to actually look at that information and it's going to be able to deduplicate that as well. So as you can see here, I had multiple items that just came across and we actually processed them into the same alert. So if I open up that alert now, I'll be able to see here all of the items, excuse me, all of the item information, and then it actually created my security incident ticket. From this particular item now, I can go down and look at the events that just came in. So I have some events that have actually been loaded in. I have multiple events that just came in today as I was hitting that enter button to send across. So now I have that available for me and I can go out and start looking at, okay, this is something I want to put a rule around, so if it's that particular asset and it has a certain criticality and it's a specific type of uh, a description or a resource, take a certain action. And in this case, I had to create a security incident. So let's go ahead and take a look at that security incident. As I go through the security incident, off the bat I can see several things have happened. First, I've actually built out an integration for this to go out and look at our Palo Alto wildfire report. Because of that, I can now, as the analyst, open this report and see what type of information has been brought across for me. I now can go in and validate that this is something I need to be concerned with. What are the ratings of this particular piece of malware? How is it going to really impact my environment? Or even validate that it's something that I really need to be concerned with. In this case, it is. So going back, I put a tag on there saying that, hey, I've validated it in, Bio, uh, in Palo Alto Wildfire. I also see that I have some virus total information and I can see that I've got some uh, citing information coming across from Splunk with it as well. Looking down further into the details here, 
I can look in the knowledge article results. So maybe if something like this has happened before, so I'm pulling up information related specifically to my knowledge articles. So how does that impact me? Let me just open this up a little bit better there. Is this something that I can, that I've seen before, I can have a quick fix for? Is this something that I need to have an article about to make sure that people are aware, go do a specific thing? I can even have playbook tasks associated to this type of an item right off the bat. So as I've defined my runbook and playbook, I can actually have those items impacting the actual incident immediately. Going down the further into the ticket, I can see multiple pieces of information are going to start becoming available to me. I have my IOC scratch pad, which is going to grab data that came across from the alert. In the alert, grab data from the events. So I'm giving the ability to start capturing different components and put them in proper places for me to actually be able to reference and, and do analysis on where necessary. So I'm going to go back to my, or further down here I should say, and I'm going to look at the workflow. So what are the workflows that kicked off? Well, I had a security operations workflow for Palo Alto. It went out and it grabbed that wildfire report before it was even assigned. So now I can actually start looking at how this process is going to work. Looking at the overall uh, malware workflow, I can see now what needs to happen as part of this. I'm going to start looking for execution in different places, making sure that my process will be executed consistently. Now, because it's being completed in the system, I can actually start monitoring where it's at. But looking at the content at the bottom, this is where we're going to start to show well, what are the different observables or uh, if I just show all items here, let me just see all related tasks. <clears throat> there are significant data points that we can start to look up. I can see what configuration item this is directly related to. But do I have any other affected services or any affected users? that I can start building this incident up with several pieces of information. Think of a, a data breach or you know maybe I have this reported but then maybe three other four other people actually created or open that same bad file and now they have the malicious code. I don't have to reinvent the wheel, I can just add them on and, and actually just incorporate them into the process by either adding in their, their system or actually relating it indirectly depending on seeing how from a business service perspective if this was an application server. So looking at other items such as observables, any indicators as well. So grabbing that valuable content and enriching my overall data and having this information available for me to go out and execute a process, you know, with and taking strategic approaches to resolve the process in a very quick and timely manner. As we've gone through this, every time something is touched on the actual uh, individual ticket or the incident record, you'll see everything is captured in the system. Every time an item is touched or updated by either the system or by a user, it's going to note what was changed and determine that information and record it so that it's properly available from a reporting and audit trail perspective. And now if I go back up to the top, I've actually moved this particular item through the process a little bit, and I want to show you the closure information. So here's where you have the ability now to go out and create a knowledge article, if you will, right here, to say, hey, this is something that we may see again, this is how I have addressed it, this is the information I validated or looked for, just key notes that I may want to add in. And then if I want to create an article so that I can share that with the rest of my team if it ever happens again. And then whatever the close code may be. Now, these are the out-of-the-box items, and you'll see that those, those items pay relevance to various components or how we want to address them. But you also have the ability to configure the system to add in other closure codes as necessary. And then again, as I mentioned, any relevant notes. And then finally, as part of the post-incident review, once we've moved this particular record into a closed or review state, we start capturing all of that information that was either executed or performed, and then any data that may have been relevant that we want to add in. And more importantly, any assessments. So I can actually go out and have my assessment completed, and I've actually done this before the demo here to show, not only did it capture everything from that incident details tab, so all of the activity and logging, when it was created, who touched it, but if I actually submitted my assessment to one or more people, I can actually have those assessment findings actually pointed out as well. Because going back to try and capture that information can be very difficult, especially if your analysts already have three or four more incidents that they're trying to handle. Being able to aggregate the data where necessary and get it posted into the system and available for quick turnaround. That being said, all of that's now in here. 
I can actually then at this point take the data out of the system if necessary into a PDF file and actually export that out to wherever we would need to send it. That sums up our security incident response application. If you have any questions, please reach out to your head sales representative. Thank you.